Don't follow trends, follow your heart. Hi there and welcome to this, to this week's astrological forecast with your astrologer Maria Yelmbo. I'm filming here from Denmark and uh, I'm sitting in the car because there's too much wind. Because I'm here by the ocean and the waves are huge. It's a water sign we're in and there's a new moon today. So uh, that's why I'm sitting here. Later in the program we will film the ocean with the voiceover. So first, let's see where the planets are this week. I will show them to you on uh, my... This one. The report is from the 28th of October until the 3rd of November 2019. So let's do this. The planetary constellations of this week are as follows. We have a lot of planets, of course, who are still in the same signs, like Saturn, Pluto, and the South Node is in Capricorn, North Node in Cancer, of course Uranus in Taurus, um, Chiron, which is not the symbol it is, but in Aries, and in the beginning of Aries, and then we have, of course, Neptune in Pisces. What's interesting is that we have Mars going from the square to Saturn into the square to Pluto this week, we have the Moon moving from Scorpio to Sag to Capricorn to Aquarius, the beginning degrees of Aquarius this week. We have the Sun uh, here, actually here, um, around 10 degrees of Scorpio plus minus, it moves one degree a day. And then we have Mercury um, in Scorpio as well, moving towards the later degrees and we have Venus changing signs into Sagittarius, where we also have Jupiter. So these are the planet constellations of the week. Um, let's start with the report. I am a little too fast because we have to draw the cards for the week. And the thing is about the cards that two signs every week. This week, not Leo and not Aries because you were last week. So uh, the last 10 signs will draw two signs that I will go into depth, uh, of, the depth of. I will draw from the houses because the cards with the signs are gone. Welcome to Mercury Retrograde. Um, so if I say the third house, it will be Gen Gemini. If I say the 11th house, it will be Aquarius and so on and so forth. So let's look at the planetary constellations of this week. Good. Let's start out with Capricorn. We have Capricorn here. Still Saturn, Pluto and the South Node, of course. In opposition to the North Node in Cancer. Interesting because this week it's going to go from a Mars square, Mars is in Libra, to Saturn, to a Pluto Mars square in Capricorn. So that's one of the, the big biggies. And then we have Venus changes sign, another biggie. Um, it's fr from Scorpio into Sag, into where Jupiter is, and then we have still the Sun in Scorpio and Mercury in Scorpio, Mercury in the later degree, the Sun just moving in there, still in the first deacon at the beginning of the week. Then we have, of course, Neptune in Pisces, Chiron in the beginning of Aries, Neptune in the middle of Pisces, and then Uranus in the beginning around five degrees of Taurus. And the moon moving from Scorpio, new moon in Scorpio, Monday until Sunday in the beginning degrees, early degrees of Aquarius. This is from Denmark, so you have to plus minus plus uh, seven hours if you're in Japan and minus six or five to nine hours if you're in the Amer Americas. So um, these were the, the planet constellations. I hope you could see them. Yes. Welcome to the collective report for all of us, the happy report with Happy and Me by the beach. I apologize for last week's sound issues. Congratulations to all the Scorpios once again. We have the Mercury Retrograde coming up this week at the 31st. So 
beware, people. Thursday is coming up soon. And uh, yeah, I advise you to back up all your items and do, do put yourself in a mode where you're ready, where you're ready and able to tolerate delays, uh, miscommunication, misunderstandings, um, that life is trying to make us all turn inwardly, inwardly instead of focusing so much about what's going on outside of us. This is what Mercury season wants us to do. So we have a new moon in Scorpio uh, Monday morning, and we are really in Scorpio season now. Um, there can be these sudden shifts of your life at a, at a deeper level. They, they can be re very positive. They can also seem harsh if you aren't prepared for making this, the change. It's the Uranus opposition. It's depending on how flexible you are. Secrets, things that people have kept in, are coming out. They are in a process of over a two-month uh, process that started on the 11th of October. Venus is changing to a new sign Saturday. Um, could be a festive evening. It's uh, Sagittarius. <laughs> so uh, now Venus is joining the party. It's out of the... She's not feeling that well in, in Scorpio, so uh, she's going to feel nicer um, over there in, in Sagittarius. Could be a tricky Friday night where she's in the late degrees of Scorpio, and then Saturday it's going to be, whew, perhaps. Um, so the moon is starting with the new moon in Scorpio Monday, but um, during the week it will increase. When, when the moon, moon is new, uh, the energy level is often very low, so the energy level will increase as it moves through a Scorp uh, from Scorpio into Sag, into a Capricorn, and finally reaches um, Aquarius by Sunday evening. The energy level will be higher at that point. Um, this week we also have um, Saturn and Neptune in a sextile, so uh, that's going to be all week. Um, that's realism in your dreams. The illusions are going to be kept away because Saturn is going to make sure that the dreams are stirred in a direction where it's actually possible to manifest them. Good cooperation between the two. Mars Saturn is going to be squaring Monday. It's going to be decreasing over the week, but Mars is going to head towards the Pluto square, which is active from Friday, uh, really active until next week, uh, into next week. The Sun and Rahu, North Node, is going to be trining, Keto sextile, of course, uh, on the 3rd. And I guess that's it for the introduction of the weekly collective report. Let's look upon what it's going to mean for us all. Oh, by the way, Chiron and Venus on Sunday is going to be in a very nice uh, trine. So uh, your self-confidential uh, issues can get a loving boost. And that's going to be, yeah, on the Sunday the 3rd. But now let's see what this week brings to us when, when we go into the details of what it actually can mean energy-wise. So this week, it's Scorpio season. Season, can you feel it? We're at the bottom of the lake, but I chose to be by the beach to get a little refreshing energy here. It's also water energy, but what does it mean, Scorpio season and the bottom of the lake? It's about us reaching the bottom of ourselves and the energy level will rise accordingly with the intensity if uh, this, the astrology, is a school schedule, what does the teacher and the institution want us to do? Well, you could try to close your eyes and start with a body relaxation exercise. If you don't have the, the ease, uh, the peace to feel and f and and just be at, at ease with yourself, in peace, without any thoughts. It's good to just feel your toes, your feet, your legs, etc., piece by piece until you are grounded. And you can meditate for 10 minutes and try to draw the attention inwardly, where you focus upon the heart or the breathing, and, and then 
draw their attention to what, what it is that you can change and alter in your life. Maybe you have a bigger and more heavy question you're dealing with, something that's weighing you down and asking for your attention without you wanting it consciously. Suggest so now that you're going to come into contact with your higher self, the part of you that's in contact with all the answers and all the questions. Don't let your brain close down by saying that you can't or you, uh, it's not possible. Have faith that the subtle answer you will get through a sensation or a sudden glimpse is going to come to you easily. Maybe it's a feeling that wants to get up and out. Uh, a feeling you normally avoid because it's not nice. Then you could find the place within you where it's okay to let go. Neptune trining all the planets in uh, Scorpio. So when you are able to this, uh, you will really much easier, more easily deal with the heaviness of what's over in your life and the receiving of the new. And find that place within where the peace and the acceptance of all is lying. The death and the recognition of it. Because all the time, little things in our lives die. Your, your, your children aren't small anymore, for example. That's the death of them being small. Or your job is over, it's the death of that job. Your parents, your grandmother, your, de your, ch your friends, maybe one, someone died. All the changes we have where that, are diff that are final uh, is a sort of a death. And if you al allow and accept this death without hanging on, there will always be sent something new and beautiful into your life. Just like if after every winter, spring and summer will call, come. So Mercury is retrograde here, and that's what does, uh, gives us the effect that there's an extra pressure on this part of our lives. And before the 2020 shift, it's super good to get a clean-up of the bodies within your closet. Uh, and... Um, because you will get m less reactions on the changes that are going to be that are going to happen around you continuously uh, these days and up until 2020, where there will be a huge shift, and it will create less chaos if you just accept the changes now and really embrace the new. In short, this means uh, to be take the responsibility for your feelings. Know that the world is mirroring you. If you have a reaction, it's something within you. People will come into your life and mirror something from you and then you re react and, and keep yourself pr a pr as a prisoner in this trap if you keep reacting. So look for the lesson behind the pain. That's the assignment for you. Of course, we have to add with the Scorpio season and with the Mercury retrograde here, back your up your stuff, have patience with others. Follow your heart and be really attentive, uh, have attention on reactions. You know, things that really need to be fixed before the 31st, all things, uh, do it as far as it's possible. Um, as the retrograde comes in, you also have a opportunity to comically finish up some stuff that needs to be fixed, but have patience with yourself and others. Um, Mercury retrograde is a time where we have to turn inwardly and give space to the inner, inner world, the inner, you know. So, so your your outer world, and after you have cleaned up that closet, will be mirroring what you, how how beautiful, uh, what a beautiful light you you allowed to enter the room because you got out all the things that that was filling up the space so that there won't room for any light so that you want the life you really you get the life you really want the higher self wants for you but you have to get rid of some of the disturbances to to reach the core we're born as innocent babies and from that point on layers of the onion is going to be put put upon us layer by layer from the parents the, the society surroundings uh, but now we are taking them off again one by one so that we can get back to the innocence return to innocence you remember that song to create a more real and pure world
by becoming it ourselves. So through the law of attraction, by, by cleaning up the inside, the outside will reflect this, simple as that. When I said have patience with others, I also meant with your electronic devices, phone calls where you're on the line for a million years, it's someone who doesn't call back at the day they promise, etc. Power issues could also be the case here. We'll talk more about that between the Pluto and Mars square. Just make sure you see the underlying tone of and intention. What are you actually doing? Are you that clean as you think you are? Or do you have some underlying things you want to manipulate your way through to that you didn't realize because you thought you were so beautiful and perfect, but your subconscious is trying to make you do stuff from a not so clean and pure level? Are you willing and able to receive what it is that you are sending out because that's what you're gonna get you will learn a lot about yourself if you're a little awake here so if you think it's others you're gonna learn something about maybe you haven't quite realized where in the projection lies in scorpio or the scorpio will hide things also for yourself or itself but with mercury here you will be able to realize what it is Venus is entering Sagittarius on Saturday, as I said. So relationships, shared resources, finances, etc. Uh, it's over. Uh, it's out of its exile in intensity and into a more still passionate, but more fire passionate. It's lighter, with less uh, obsessive tendencies, and now it's in an adventure mode with the. Lust of learning different kinds of cultures, types of people, and things to know. Might be a little more flirtatious, more changeable relationship-wise. The need for freedom and liberty will increase. The Pluto and Mars square at the end of the week. Power struggles. Maybe you want the power in a situation, and if you try to suppress this need, it can give some negative feedback, and you might be getting some frustrations and dark, passive-aggressive, self-destructive things going on inside of you. So pay attention to what can come. Um, that, that there can come these power themes between you and others. Maybe a better half at work. Regardless, try to handle it uh, with attention on your heart as well. Sun Rahu trying, Kesu sextile. Well, special privileges that are gonna boost your performances and what you want to achieve in this transformational process from darkness to light. Maybe it's gonna be easy for you to express these deep things that's going on for your advantage. Neptune loosely um, in this trine saying let go, surrender, have faith and trust the process then you'll get real wind in the sails especially if you use your intuition and feel, follow the inner voice instead of uh, thinking about um, maintaining this uh, renome or status or name that you have. Take a rest in your own personal strength. Let's end it with the good one. Venus, by the way, is entering into Sag where Jupiter is. So these are the two benefics. So it will make a super positive tone for us for a month oh, from the 1st to the 26th of November where they will be there together. So take advantage of the optimism and the visionary, um, broad-minded perspectives here in Sag. Sag and Aquarius are the two signs of the week. After we've said uh, goodbye to all the rest of you guys, we have Sag and Aquarius. So hold on, let's just say goodbye to all the others. Let me make a voiceover on this because the wind was in the sound. So let me just say this. Don't follow trends, follow your heart. That's what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> and then uh, if you want to go in to check out Modern Shaman, on my profile is www modernshaman.dk you can also go to heartfulness.org if you want to learn about meditation and get a free instructor anywhere in the world search 
for you this week. It's all about your 12th house where you're really letting go. It's, it's, it is a, well, until the little before the middle of December, you are really, uh, of course, you're going to have your birthday, so it will be lightening up before, but you are in a process of really letting go of something old on a very deep level. It's in your 12th house, and it's something you didn't even remember or recall. It comes from a very deep, maybe even karmic place, and now is the time to realize what it is and understand it. It will really help you release stuff. And Venus is in your sign while it all goes on, so you will have care and nurturing around this healing process. Then we will have Aquarius. Aquarius, for you guys, it's in your career house. So there will be a focus upon a change within your career. And also a light will be shed upon how to understand what's going on in your career and what is actually what you really want and what you don't want anymore. What do you need to let go of within your career? What is some, an old story you attach yourself, attach yourself to, but now you're realizing why it's so that you don't need to attach to it anymore. It's going to be let go of, and you, with Venus and Jupiter on your 11th, you can really draw upon the help of friends from friends. Don't follow trends, follow your heart.